What I'd like you to do is apologize instead of being a bitch. You're calling me sorry, but you're calling me a bitch. I'll oh, set, an, set an example. I'm sorry. My kids can't hear me calling you a bitch. Your window's open. They can't hear me because they're listening to kids. This is for the older men. If you're not an older man, then just keep scrolling. Now that the older men are here, you guys. I mean, what can I say? The ass was sitting. It was sitting. I do understand why he was intrigued. <laughs> yeah, I'm single. And you want to know why I'm single? Because I want to be. I don't want a man. I don't need a man to define me. Mmm. Oh my God. Oh my God. Men are frustrating. Ladies, we love them, but we got to admit they're frustrating at times. The white one hasn't found me yet. He's probably stuck in a tree somewhere. Calling in the, the fire department with an army of turtles. Yeah, that's what he's doing. I'm single because I want... I'm hungry. So lick that coat. You smell like Grilled a... Grilled cheese. What? Grill me a cheese. I'm not grilling you a cheese. Uh... What? <laughs> I'm pretty and smart, and I get along with everyone, even ugly girls. Mm-hmm. Here. White people should not use black emojis. It's fucking weird. Like, lesbians should not cheat on their partner three different times with men. It's fucking weird. Stop the cow. <laughs> Talk about it. Oh, so you're a slut. You like give it up really easy. You're a fucking slut. Yeah, double homicide. Bitch. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. What she wrote stated God made me tall and a feminist. Tall isn't bad, but I'm guessing she's implying she wants a man at least taller than her, which means at least six feet or more. And then she's a feminist, which means she's a massive headache and a liability. At least she knows her options are limited. If you date a woman 10 years longer, younger than you, you're 40% more likely to get a divorce and she's going to initiate. The younger partner is usually the one that initiates it. If you marry a woman who's not college educated, your likelihood of divorce also doubles. So if you guys well, are talking about know. statistics... You're actually college educated women no, are more you, likely to initiate divorce. You, you have a selection bias there. So you're looking at the couples that are already getting divorced and you're saying, oh, she's more initiated. No, you don't know stats. No, you're, you're, just, you're just arguing to argue. No, like, that's true. Can I you, explain? And you've, and you've said a bunch of bullshit stats on the last show as well. A bunch no. of people fact checked you and was like, this girl's No, talking your, out your audience <sighs> also looks up my fake name and thinks I'm not a lawyer. I have my bar card in my purse. I'm trying to say that your selection bias, let me explain it to you. If you're looking at couples who are already getting divorced and you're seeing who's more likely to initiate out of that crowd that is not the same thing as looking at all married people in general because you're only looking at the couples that are already getting divorced college educated women are less likely to be in that group in the first place does, does that make sense to you not sure where this thought feminist got her stats but it's completely wrong maybe she's conflating older men marrying younger thoughts or trophy wives versus women their age who have little to no options as in they couldn't find a better relationship if they tried other than that that's about it when it comes to older women, you can't teach an old dog new tricks. Younger women are easier to conform in a relationship and are more likely to respect the older man. Anyways, she's wrong because college-educated post walls are the most likely to be single. Before we go on with the video, let me share the comment of the day. Shout out to Megabytes who shared, They're not pissed off about men going their own way, they are pissed off about their retirement plans going their own way. Only factual statements around here. Thank you for sharing that comment, so please don't forget to reach out to my email to claim your five bucks. As always guys, I'll be picking one comment from each video. Could be the funniest, the most liked, or just one that moved me. So don't forget to leave a comment, and you could be tomorrow's winner. So be sure to hit that like and sub button too, as it helps out a ton, y'all. So now let's get right back into the video. your masculinity
Right. Um, I've noticed I've noticed that older women use that as a shaming tactic to men anytime they date a woman in their 20s. And the thing is this, ladies, it's biological. Hey there, decrepit old hag over the age of 18 here. Going to talk about how this is an absolute myth and that men are not biologically hardwired to prefer young women. When dudes say that wanting younger women is just in their DNA, what they're really saying is they want an excuse to be absolute creepers. They're also making an effort to hold on to the last vestiges of power that they have left because women are continuing to encroach on all of the spaces that they once dominated and they are terrified to lose their unearned privilege and lose the little relevance that they have left. This myth has been perpetuated by evolutionary psychology, which is a widely criticized field because they don't do a good job of distinguishing between environmental and cultural explanations for things and adaptive evolutionary explanations for things. And they don't stand up to the rigorous standards of traditional evolutionary biology when it comes to providing causal evidence. There was this dude, David Buss, who in the late 80s did this study where he looked at men and women across 37 countries and observed that men typically go for younger women, women typically go for older men. And he hypothesized that it was because men were seeking women of peak fertility. But what's interesting is he didn't apply this same mode of thought for women because men also lose fertility as they age. Every year after the age of 20, they're becoming less fertile and a 40 year old dude will take at least two years to get a peak fertile woman pregnant. People that work in this field are often criticized for conflating what actually is with what they think ought to be. They observe a pattern and then they make it fit a narrative that they already believe. And this is why you'll often see evolutionary psychologists advocating against social change, and why Dr. Buss is often seen with Jordan Peterson chatting on the internet. The really interesting thing about those 37 countries that Buss studied is that if you look at them over time, you track mating strategies and the ages at which people are attracted to one another, and you compare that to the countries. UN gender equality index score, as gender equality rises, the age gap shrinks. That idea that men are naturally hardwired to go for younger women starts to disappear almost as quickly as Myron's hairline. So when those traditional gender roles are stripped away, people are getting together closer in age because they have more in common, right? They're at similar life stages and there are other things influencing what makes a good partnership. So when shitty dudes are talking about youth being the number one thing they look for in a woman, what they're doing is try to devalue women's accomplishments because we're working on outpacing them in every category and they are scared. So they're gonna tell you your career doesn't matter, your education doesn't matter, your ambition doesn't matter, your wealth doesn't matter. And what's more important is that you're young and submissive. And what better way for them to try and sell this but by telling you that it's just a matter of biology and it can't be changed. They want to scare women and make them think that if they're over the age of 25, like all male attention will simply vanish. Unfortunately for them, the majority of women are waking up to the fact that life is a lot better without problematic men. And so many women are realizing that y'all simply aren't worth the trouble. And the data supports this. Single childless women are the happiest in society. They are happier being without men that treat them like dogs or are looking for replacement mommies. And I would be remiss if I did not acknowledge the fact that many of these men also suffer from crippling self-esteem issues. And the only way that they can feel more like a man and more like they have something of value is if they are controlling, manipulating, and abusing someone else. And often, that's women. <laughs> ah, yes, men are biologically hardwired to like younger women because it's called them being in their prime when they're in the best shape of their life, which most men find the most attractive. Coincidentally, they're also the most fertile in their prime and have the most eggs. That is when the kids have the highest chance of being born healthy without any problems, while post walls over 30, especially over 35, when having kids, are considered to have a geriatric pregnancy, which means the kids have a higher risk of having health problems. As for the so-called peak fertility for men, that's a myth. Maybe it declines in their 60s, but you see men in their 60s having kids. This is a fact throughout history, especially when it comes to kings. You rarely hear women having kids past the age of 40, and it's only because of modern technology that they can perform C-sections and so on. 
The only reason why men would lose fertility is because of all the toxins in the food, products, and environment. As over time, that accumulates in the body like the balls, which reduces sperm count. But that's not a natural thing. Also, I think the study had the older men trying to get older women pregnant, compared to the younger men who'd on average be with younger women. So in the end, the bias proved that older women aren't as fertile as younger ones. Top comment says, The majority of these men are not dating any woman at all and act like they're Hugh Hefner. And the feminist in the video responds, I know, right? And this just proves how out of touch with reality she is. She has PTSD from getting played by Chad and Tyrone, so she thinks every man can have a rotation of younger women, like the men that used her. This whole video was her just being big mad that men don't want her anymore. A post wall comments, Ask any woman on dating sites. The amount of young men looking for older women is unreal. That's because the top 10% men don't need dating apps. Also, younger men are forced to increase their search to include post walls because the young hot ones are only picking the Chads and Tyrones or the older rich men. And these young men are looking for practice strokes not to start a family with the post walls. There's a big difference. It's no coincidence that both demographics, that is young men and post walls, which are the lowest SMV demographics in the dating market, end up entertaining each other to make do with their limited options. Another post wall comment, Absolutely. I've said it before, and I'll keep saying it. These types of guys are scared of accomplished, strong, confident women. This is massive cope. They're not scared, but repulsed by used-up post walls. There's a big difference. Alright. This whole dating thing, you know, I am 53. Just because I'm 53 doesn't mean that I'm old and put on a shelf. I can run with the best of the 30-year-olds still. It's just the number, people. I don't feel like I'm 53 because I'm still young. I don't have kids, never been married. You know, all these, I don't do dating sites, okay? I just don't do it. Did it years ago, a long, long time ago. I don't do it. I don't have kids because of other things. Um, I never been married because it's never happened. Um, my career, it's always been there. Um, people don't give people a chance anymore. It's like, um, you know, I own my own place. I own my own car. I pay my own bills. Oops. Um, it's like, is there any real people out there anymore? I mean, I get sent so much bullshit. And I'm like, like within two seconds you can tell somebody's BSing you. I've been around the block a little bit. I'm not I'm not gonna be somebody sugar's mama, so don't think it's gonna happen because it's not. Um I still believe in somebody opening my door for me, somebody being the man, but yet I'm still an independent woman. Damn. It's like is there any real people out there anymore? It's like geez, come on. Never underestimate a leftover woman's ability to overestimate her worth. She looks like she's in her 60s at least, like a grandpa wearing his wig. She may claim age is just not a number, but she may feel as young as she wants. That doesn't matter. It's what men think, and they're not touching her with a six-foot pole. Her teeth are even jacked up. That's the one thing she can control, and she can't even do that. This is what happens when most women hit menopause. If 30 is hitting the wall, along with 40 is hitting another wall. 50 is getting ran over by a semi-truck or fallen off the cliff. She doesn't have kids because no man of value wanted to have kids with her at her prime. Give it up, Grandma, and retire at a nursing home already. Ladies, it's about that time to stop being insecure and start being a fucking problem. Especially if you're a moderately attractive woman and you're in your, like, 20s. Cut the shit. I know that your brain is telling you that you're fat and you're ugly and he doesn't want you and you're internalizing everyone's body language and you're hyper fixated on how you might be perceived by other people and what your outfit looks like to like X, Y, and Z or what the fuck ever. I'm telling you, as a woman who is now 33 years old, the level of cringe I have for like how I treated myself in my fucking head when I was literally so fucking hot in my 20s in new york thinking that i was fat messing around with fuck boys it's like tragic 
And now that I know the true power a woman holds in this world, it is my mission to spread that good word and dispel this like true pandemic of low self-esteem that has plagued women. It's just complete bullshit. Seriously, if you fall into this category, just I don't care what fucking approach you need to take. If it's hypnosis, if it's affirmations, if it's talking to yourself in the fucking mirror until you believe it every single day and every single night, but nip that shit in the butt because you're literally at the apex, okay? You are powerful beyond measure. There is absolutely no reason to be beating yourself up or to not be like that bitch every single day. Like, oh my God, this dress makes me look a little fat. You can see my pooch. Shut up. Shut up. Nobody notices. Posting content. Oh my God, I'm so sorry for my stained bag and my mess. Shut up. Nobody even noticed. No one gives a shit. You're hot. Just accept that you're hot, accept your power, and use it. Aspiring to be a quote-unquote an effing problem is the very reason why women in the feminist West are single, as most see that the juice ain't worth the squeeze. And most women in America are overweight, so the last thing they need is more confidence. Despite being so effing hot, as she claims, she's still single in her 30s. So what does that tell you? And no, it's because she was insecure when she was younger. Men she was sleeping with didn't see relationship value in her. This whole video is telling modern women to be more feminist than they already are. Not one advice was on how to keep a quality man, how to cook, or how to clean. It's all this fake power bullshit as if they were building an army to conquer new lands. Delusionally stupid. Most women commenters agree with the statement. One commenter points out, I'm in my 20s and hot as fuck and I'm afraid to be hot. It makes zero sense. That's because all their self-worth has been wrapped up into her looks. Also, being hot is code word for being an SLUT to live out that hot girl summer. What the commenter is really saying is that she's afraid to be an SLUT, as she should, but videos like this and the feminist society are going to convince her to waste her beauty away on sleeping around. They convince her that a rental car is worth more than a new car. So another commenter asks, more tips on how to be a problem. That's why she'll continue to stay single. And back to the idea about being a problem, only hot women can be a problem or hard to deal with because men will put up with it as long as they're hot. This is predicated on being hot. As soon as these problems age out or their looks diminish, men aren't going to put up with it and will walk away. Does any other woman who dates and deals with men wake up on a Sunday morning and be like, oh fuck, I'm the problem? Because that's me today. I realize that I am the issue. I called a guy at two in the morning last night, told him to come over. Okay, all right. He's a roster member, I call him little Chico, and I do in fact call him that to his face. What are you gonna do? Anyways, all right, Nicole. And he said when he was leaving, looking forward to the next 2 a.m. call, and I go, oh, fuck, oh, oh, wow. And last night, I also gave my number to a bartender on my receipt. And he texted me, hey, how you doing, what's up? Okay, Nicole, what are you doing? Like, I don't know, I'm like, as a girl who complains about fuckboys a lot, I'm like, I think I'm the issue. I'm the fuck girl. Oh my God. So, I guess next steps are, do I do something about it? I just don't really have time right now. Like, I, I'm a little stressed, and that's fine, but I just don't really have time to date i don't know so that's why i'm like do i just keep fucking around and just doing this shit i don't know also last night was a night where i like was like oh, i'm not going out obviously i end up out so yeah i realize i'm the problem and probably gonna keep going love these strips all right bye to answer her question no but it might be too late Think of the cock carousel as a black hole. The more men a woman sleeps with, the closer she gets to vacuum until she's pulled into the gravity pit. Then she gets fully sucked in. This is the real example of that. She can't help but to continue sleeping around. The modern woman lifestyle of going to college and having a career doesn't help to support a monogamous relationship because she doesn't have time or the energy, as she said, for dating, just for screwing. She wrote in the description, the diaries of an insane woman realizing she may be an F-girl, help. 
There's no such thing as an F-U-C-K girl or a girl player and etc. Because it doesn't take skill for a woman to say yes to get laid. If she's average looking, she can hook up with most guys anywhere she goes. One of the top comments says, I actually relate to this 100% LMAO whoops. That's not a surprise. Another comment, we are here for the chaos, bestie. And she responded, ha ha ha, there's more where that came from. This is why it's hard for a female in today's society to stay a virgin, because modern women will cheer each other on to self-destruction. And a dude asks, do you have a team member in Phoenix? He's asking about her roster of men she sleeps with. She responds, no, my team members haven't expanded outside of Charleston County yet. She may screw the whole state by the time she turns 30, but this isn't something women should be aspiring to. Yet because of feminism, they're wearing it as a badge of honor. Right now, she's young, so these relationship offers are a dime a dozen, but when she hits that wall, she's gonna wish to be in one. Very sad to see someone hit that threshold of the black hole where there's no going back. I usually, like, never fucking post myself crying, but, like, I'm a crying don't stop, and I can't, like, stop crying, but... So, yesterday, I went to West Hollywood Pride, and it's June 1st, it's the first official day of Pride. It was the Women's Freedom Festival, and it was the Dyke March, and I went with my girlfriend. And it was, you know, we had a really great time, I was there with my friends, and... I really wanted to go dancing and so we go into one of the clubs on West Hollywood Strip where every single place is just like hosting fun music. It's like great vibes. Like this is the most diverse I've ever seen West Hollywood. Like it's usually only during Pride. But like I already had a lot of anxiety and I went out with my girlfriend. We were dancing together with my friends, a man came up behind me and groped me, and he put his hands underneath my skirt. <laughs> and tried to pretend like it wasn't him, and he's the only person behind me. I'm so upset because I already don't really like going to West Hollywood because there's like a lot of straight guys who like harass me and I like immediately went home and like cried the whole time going home and then I woke up this morning crying. <laughs> and I don't even want to go to like the parade like I just <laughs> don't want to even go outside. Like it's already hard enough. We're able to go outside and feel safe. Just goes to prove the worst males are the so-called male feminists or female allies. And this type of crime happens the most in feminist cities, where the cops would rather arrest people for leaving skid marks on the rainbow color intersections than actual crimes. I shit you not. She claimed the 1950s were oppressive to women, yet she can't even walk in the gayest parts of America. Also, this could be a gay playing a prank on her as they're a protected class in the feminist West, so they can do no wrong. You get what you voted for, feminists. As always, I wish you tremendous success. Now it's your turn. What do you think? Let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. Remember that if you leave the best comment, you'll get five bucks. Thank you so much for watching. If you found value in this video, hit the like and subscribe buttons, ring the notification bell so you don't miss out on future uploads, drop a comment, and share it. See you in the next video. Till next time.